Hey, what's up guys? Kaiser here, and I'm coming at you with a new show we're doing. You guys have seen some of the other stuff that we do on video, my Kaiser's Corner pieces. You guys see the testimonials, the amazing testimonials of our members, of you. And now we're doing a few shows where I'm talking about different subjects. This might turn out to be the first one that you see. And today's subject is going to be the NBA Finals. Something going on right now, something that we can all learn from. Uh, some of the other stuff we've done are book reviews, and some of those episodes we're still producing, you're going to get those very soon. But today, like I said, is something, uh, a sporting event that a lot of us are into. Even if you're not a basketball fan, I'm sure it's got your attention right now, because it's two of the biggest teams playing each other, and uh, it's a big show. It's like a lot of fun to watch. So, uh, besides it being an entertaining sporting event... Uh, I think there's a lot that we can learn from it. You know, the point of these shows, for example, the book review I bought up, the point of that is that I want fitness to always be top of mind for you. When you come to boot camp, sure, you're into it for one hour. You're not thinking about anything else. You can leave your problems outside. But then when you get out of here, what happens? All the other influences out there in society are trying to take you off of your game. That's why I hear so often that when a member misses a few classes, their entire fitness regimen can fall apart. Their eating will fall apart, and then when boot camp isn't on your mind, isn't in front of you when you're not in here, you're less likely to be coming back. So that being said, I want you to start seeing fitness everywhere around you. I want it top of mind at all times. That's the only way that you're going to be able to brainwash yourself and get that body, that next level that you want. So, uh, getting back to my point, there's a lot of lessons we can get from the finals. Now, first off, it's uh, these two major teams. It's the Warriors and it's the Cavs. So, uh, there's a few lessons we can learn from both of them. Now, with the Warriors, the major thing that I get from them is that it just shows you what it takes to win. If you've been following this series, if you're a basketball fan, you know that the Warriors won the title the first time out. Then they lost it the second time out. So what did they do? They already had the best team in the league. They won the most games in history. But they went and signed another top three player. And that's a big lesson in life. That no matter, I mean, win or lose is so close, even if you have everything stacked in front of you, you still might lose. So don't take any chances. So I really love that lesson uh, of how they already had the best team, but they didn't stop. They didn't rest. They didn't think that, oh, hey, we'll just give it a shot next year. They were like, you know what? We're going to stack the deck. We're going to get every possible benefit we can in our favor and again, that's a major lesson for all of us. It's something I talk about with our team all the time uh, here at Better Body. That no matter how good we get, you just want every piece in place you want to get even better. And obviously, a lot of lessons in your life. Don't just think, oh, I have my family going great. School or work is going great. I can let my body slip. No. Get every single piece working in your favor. And that's the only way you're guaranteed to be a champion, guaranteed to be a winner, in your case, obviously, in life. Now, on the other side, we have LeBron's team. We have the Cavs. So a few lessons we can learn from there. Now, first off, one of the reasons why I'm into this series, one of the reason, reasons why I'm sure a lot of you are into this series is because of LeBron. There's a lot of LeBron haters out there, so you're watching to watch him lose. And there's a lot of people that admire LeBron. Now, I'm one of those people that just gets really inspired by people excelling at a high level of doing just amazing things. It inspires me, and uh, it really shows me what's possible out there. So I think uh, even if you don't like LeBron, there's a lot uh, of lessons you can learn from him. And uh, on top of that, LeBron's a good example of why training, coaches, all of those things are so super important. Now, first off, LeBron is 33 years old. When it comes to sports um, terms, that's kind of like middle age. It's kind of like being 50. He's not old yet. 
He's not 80, like when he's 40, that's kind of like being 80, I would say, like you're just done. But at 33, you're at about 50, you're going to be winding down in your physical abilities. But he's still at the top of his game. He, as you can't argue, he's the best player in the league. So how did he do that? It came out recently that he spends more than a million bucks a year on his body, on coaching, on trainers, uh, on his nutrition. And even for a guy that makes a lot, makes a, as much as him, that's a pretty sizable investment. I would argue that any of you watching here, your boot camp membership, your food, all of that, probably doesn't equal as much of a percentage of your yearly income as LeBron is spending on his health and fitness. So again, a big lesson in that, guys. Those of you, well, it's no one watching this, but those people out there that are complaining about spending on fitness, complaining about how much good food costs, that they just want convenience, they just want to save money, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not going to get the most uh, out of yourself. You're not going to get the most out of your potential. So uh, some big lessons uh, you can learn from him. So we have these two teams. Now uh, let's talk about the games themselves. So uh, as of the time I'm recording this, it's on a Tuesday. The Warriors are leading 2-0, so this series uh, may be over soon. We'll see. Now, the big drama that happened in this series so far was the whole J.R. Smith timeout, no timeout, you know, running around with the ball uh, thing that happened in game one. Like, the Cavs are big, big underdogs in this series. You can't mess up when you're an underdog. But they messed up big time at the end of regulation. And I think this whole thing, this is the main topic I want to discuss. Um, is this different between J.R. Smith this guy that's known to be kind of like a kind of like a loopy guy, like a little crazy, a little nuts, uh, not the best basketball career, and LeBron James, one of the most iconic athletes of all time, one of the most iconic people living in our time. So we look at these two people, both guys on the same team, both in the same league, both overall at the top of their game, you know, and you're in the NBA, but there's major differences between them. So, uh, yeah, and that's, that's what I want to get into, that who do you want to be in life? Is it worth it to be JR or is it worth it to be LeBron? This is something that I talked about in, um, I talk about it with our team sometimes here. And I talk about, I talked about it in a podcast episode that I don't think that we eventually threw away. We didn't like it, but it's a pretty deep subject. It's whether or not it's even worth it to excel. It's something you have to ask yourself, that when you're working hard for your body, you're working hard in boot camp, you're watching your food, you know, you could eat perfectly for a day, you could come to boot camp and work out as hard as you want, the next day the scale will not go down a pound. It takes an ongoing effort, an ongoing commitment. So a lot of times we have to ask ourselves, is it worth it? Now, JR is a guy who's known a lot in the media, is pretty well known relative to his basketball skills he's probably a little more famous than he should be and the reason is because he just has this uh you know personality it's all of his extracurricular stuff he's always just doing stupid stuff on the court like we were just talking about he's doing stupid stuff in public he's um his stuff that he does uh in social media girls that he dates you know a lot of instagram girls that that he's going out with or that he's talking to a lot of that stuff comes out so He's living a fun life, he's in music videos, he's out at nightclubs all the time. So that's one way to live your life. Now you can think about it, if that's what your values are, that you want, you only live once, you know, uh, you know, that whole YOLO thing where, you know, screw working hard, let me just do whatever it takes to get by and enjoy my life. That's one attitude that you could take in life. I think a lot of people do take that. And um, for some people it works. You know, for some people, that's your value system, then maybe that's what's right for you. And then you got a guy like LeBron. Again, like I said, an iconic figure in today's society, one of the best known, respected people in his sport, the leader of his team. Now, this guy, he's more of a square kind of guy. He's uh, been with, according to the, you know, what everyone says out there, the same woman his entire career since he was in high school. Uh, I think there is stuff out there that he's dated a few famous women that, you know, I haven't looked that much into the gossip, so I don't really know, but uh, more or less we can just say that he's lived a more kind of even keel, square 
type of life. He's training a lot, like I talked about. Uh, he's always working out, taking care of his body. He has his family. He has his kids. So, um, but he's missing out maybe on as many nights out and parties and stuff that JR is enjoying. But he's the champion. He's one of the most respected people on the planet. So I think the answer to who would you rather be, is it JR or LeBron, comes down to your value system. And then what we're relating this back to is the subject of being a champion with your own body, getting the most out of your own body, really uh, achieving the goals you have for yourself. Is that even worth it? And I think you guys are going to know my answers. I think the answer is an obvious yes. I think a lot of the stuff, a lot of the excuses, a lot of the short-term uh, type of um, things we do, like uh, for JR, it might be a few nights of partying, and then he has a really bad game. For you, it could be a few nights out eating and drinking too much, and then you have a bad workout. You're getting away from your goal. So uh, that is one way to look at things, but I don't think it's worth it. I think the short-term pleasure of just that, that enjoyment that takes you uh, away from the bigger goal is uh, not going to be as fulfilling as the LeBron approach of just putting everything you have into it and getting results that you can enjoy for the rest of your life. I always talk about fitness as a metaphor for life, and it's also a habit, it's a, uh, it's a discipline that you can overlay on every other area in your life. If you can control yourself when you work out, how you structure your day, when you wake up, what your meals are, self-discipline, being a little hungry or saying no to certain things. If you can do that, if you can master your body, you can do that in every single other area of your life. It's the same habits, it's the same disciplines, it's something that you can just take in fitness, put it onto your career, put it onto your relationships. You can tackle them all the same way. And also on top of that, your fitness will affect every other single area of your life. Uh, when it, we talked about relationships, the first impression people have uh, on you is everything. It's everything. We judge books by their covers these days. When it comes to your careers, uh, when it comes to your career, uh, when it comes down to it, we're just all animals. People know who to follow, who, to, uh, who is the leader by their personal power. And when it comes to um, things like your family, again, it's a leadership thing. People are looking at you. Do you have discipline over yourself, then I will accept you disciplining me. If you don't, if you're sloppy, if you're lazy, then get away from me. I'm not going to listen to you. So um, this whole subject of who would you rather be? Would you rather be Iverson or Jordan? Would you rather be JR or LeBron? Something we could talk about. It's something we could debate. But my answer, if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure your answer is I'd rather be the winner. I'd rather put in the work, take care of my body, and then have the result. But that being said, every now and then, you might have a J.R. Smith on your team that screws the whole thing up. All right, guys, so that's my little uh, review or uh, update on the NBA Finals. And again, don't just watch the commercials that are telling you to get pharmaceutical medication and uh, Doritos. Watch the game, learn from it, and it's probably some things that can get you even better uh, with your workouts and have a better body. So uh, that's it for this episode, and I'll be talking to you soon. Take care.